going on guys, Hitboss here with a pretty quick and fairly fun tutorial uh, for UE4 uh, and what we're going to talk about in this one is the physics constraint. So the idea is what we're going to do is we're going to create like a chain of like objects that will swing and they're all hooked to each other. So it's really simple to actually do. Uh, I don't want to make it like it's, you know, anything difficult or anything like that. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take these two cannonballs here and we're going to hook them together so that one of them swings. So what you can do is you can come over here and under your placement tool you can just type phys or phy here and you can get the physics constraint actor and we'll just drag that like right on here. Now what I want to actually do just for the sake is because I'm going to end up doing some parenting and things like that um, you'll notice that I have cannonballs here and then I have physics constraint actors here. Now in the case of a map that's really really full of a lot of actors, uh, these can be separated by a huge distance. So we're just going to organize it by selecting them really quick and we're just going to move them to a new folder, create new folder here and we'll just call that test for now. Okay, So everything's inside of the test. And so essentially what we do is once we've created the physics act uh, constraint here, I'll move it over to the side because there is actually a weird, uh, there's something weird about it. What you'll get is you'll get constraint actor 1 and constraint actor 2. Uh, pointer to the first actor, pointer to the second actor. So this basically links the two together. So what you do is you click this little um, eyedropper here, it says pick actor from scene, and we'll pick this actor right here. Now the one thing that these things need for this to work, because it is a physics constraint, is for them to simulate physics. So we're going to turn that on. However, this one, I'm actually going to turn it off because I want an anchor point. So you'll see that if I play this now, let me actually go to simulate. Where did I put the balls? Okay, if I hit stop here. If I play this right now, what will happen is the one ball will just drop. Okay, and it also doesn't have any collision, but it's actually not a requirement for this to work. However, we can add collision easy enough. This actually requires a second actor to be chosen, and it can, I don't believe it can pick itself. So what we'll do is we'll pick this cannonball here, and you'll see now that we get a red line to actor one and a blue line to actor two, and if I simulate now, notice that the ball is swinging. However, it's not swinging from this guy. Now this is what I felt was kind of weird. I told it for a constraint actor to be one, so I would expect a line here for it to swing from here. But what you actually want to do, if we come over here, you can see that this is cannonball one on our list. This is our physics constraint. What we're going to do is we're going to link this to cannonball one. Okay, and then with it linked, we're going to zero out its position because it is now the, this position is now officially relative to the cannonball one. So we're going to zero that out, and so we can essentially simulate the fact that it is swinging around this ball right here. Okay, so it's super simple, and the controls for the physics constraint are actually all right here. It's the same thing as using like FAT, like the the physics asset tool. Um, you get angular, and notice that we're free here. We could lock an axis if we wanted to, so it only swings pendulum style in one axis, even if you were to give it an impulse in another direction or something like that. And we also have the linear motion locked because we want this to be a swing. We don't want it to slide up and down, or slide left and right, or or, or slide. Yeah, left and right in this direction either, forward or backwards. So what we can do now for funsies is we can actually chain this out to as many as we want. And what we need to do is we need to also duplicate the physics constraint. So this one is going to be cannonball 2 will be the next ball and cannonball, well not cannonball, but constraint actor 1 will be to this one. Okay. And this physics constraint wants to be linked to this object, which is Cannonball 2. So I'll select this, and I'll drag it onto Cannonball 2, and I'll zero out its um, position. Okay. Then I'll make another dupe here. Okay. And constraint 1 goes here, and constraint 2 goes here. And if we look, this is Cannonball 3. So I'll pick this, and I will link it to Cannonball 3, and I'll zero it out. And now when we simulate, they're all linked together. Pretty cool, right? And the other cool thing is that if 
I'm going to take this one and I'm going to not simulate physics and fairly quickly here actually this does have a collision I can see the sphere right there so let's see why they're not colliding they may be set collision enabled multiple values I think they might be set to something so let's just go ahead and make this custom hang on cannonball 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 and we'll make it block all notice when it hits the other ball what happens also you'll notice that if I'm panning the screen around one of them stops simulating this guy stops simulating but as soon as I that's because I'm holding right mouse right now as soon as I let it go it starts simulating again so don't let that freak you out let me just move this guy like up here and I'll simulate again see how that one hits and now they're si they're swinging off so this is proof positive that they are in fact chained to each other and not all chained up here okay and there is actually absolutely nothing stopping you at this point from adding say a cable actor here and what you can do is I'll take this cable actor and I will move it to my test folder here and I will remember this is cannonball okay so I'm gonna link it to cannonball and then what I'll do is I'll say other actor is this guy okay and I need to make sure that its position is once again zeroed out and when I hit play you see I now have that cable in between them and that the cable has some values here that you can play with uh, so we kinda need to dial this in so something like that and again I could come here remember this is cannonball cannonball 2 so I'll take this one and go to cannonball 2 okay and then I'll set the endpoint to cannonball 3 and zero its position out boom then I'll make another dupe okay remember this is cannonball 3 so we're going to link that to cannonball 3 zero out its position and pick the last object and now we officially have this funky chain object in there which is you know not the most stable of physics elements or anything like that but it does in fact work so hopefully you guys found that fun and simple and interesting so let's actually let's try one more thing let's see let's just grab one of these physics actors here what I'll do is this should be six I believe okay so we're going to take this one and we're going to link it to six okay and we'll zero out its position and the first link we're going to go the opposite direction now it's actually going to be the end okay if you were looking at it this way so I went from six here so if you notice these are uh, let's go to one of these these are red then blue red then blue but if we look at our last one it's blue then red if we're looking from left to right here okay and now if we simulate now notice it's actually linked here which becomes even more obvious if we go like this So it can act a little funny when you start to do, like if I were to also chain it out from this way and this way, the physics can uh, actually um, be a little bit uh, weird in some ways. So let's take a look at that last constraint let's try reversing it so here and here and now that's really kind of weird I'll be honest it seems stiff one of them's not simulating physics or they're all no they're all simulating physics so you can make things a little funky uh, part of the reason is is that this guy 
is linked to this one. It's hooked there, so if I hook it up here and then zero it out, which one is this? Count of all four. That. Zero that out. If I play that now. See, now I just added it to the end like it's just another piece of the chain. And you can actually do quite a few of these, uh, like at least 10, and it, it'll stay pretty stable. But if I reverse it again, okay, so it goes from 6 to 4 now instead of 4 to 6, we get a little bit of a weirder, um, we get a little bit of a weirder simulation, especially if I stop this from simulating. Okay. It's like we're getting no movement whatsoever. These are actually still simulating, and if one were to impulse this up and down, for instance, let's take this guy and move it up. And we'll just move that one up like so, and I'll simulate physics on this one. We'll take a look. See how it hits it and it's still bouncing around? So they're still simulating. But when you, when you want to hook two ends, it gets a little weird. Like, if you notice, this isn't swinging around like it should. You would expect this to move, but it doesn't. And again, we would want the physics constraint here to go to cannonball 6, should we want this to be the hinge point. Because remember, the, the physics constraint itself is still the hinge point. And I really don't understand why the first connection has to be linked to an object otherwise it doesn't connect anything so it's kind of strange uh, to be honest really kind of strange actually out of curiosity let me see what happens I have a physics constraint here and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to constrain the ball to I hit that? It's self? Can I do that? So same same element. And let's make sure that this guy is simulating physics and it is. Okay, see how it doesn't work? It just falls. So it can be a little weird in that regard. And again, you'll notice here that it's strange too. So it's not 100% and maybe I'm doing something wrong. If you guys see, like if, if somebody sees an obvious thing that I am doing wrong, let me know. But I, I've, I don't really see anything wrong because if I go to Physics Constraint 4 and say clear, clear, and then simulate, Let's take a look again. This is constraint four. I'm actually going to delete these because my list is getting a little confusing. But I th I don't think I ended up copying that physics constraint. Actually, if you move far enough away, that the scaling of these things can actually help you out. But we'll take this guy. Remember, this is cannonball six. So we'll hook that to six. Zero it out. Set the first to be this ball and the second to be this ball. That seems better. The thing to note about these though, however, you gotta keep in mind that this is a rotational constraint. If you've ever played a game like Little Big Planet, you'll know that there's rope attachments which can actually let an object get closer or farther away, um, but only as far away as the length of the rope but if it gets knocked towards the object, it, the rope will compress. This can't happen. This is actually, excuse me, this is connected by like a, like a iron rod. You know, think of it like that. This is, this is a, like a ball joint, and it's, this, this might as well be totally, you know, steel joint to the whole thing. So this is why we're gonna get some weird behavior like, like this kind of stuff, where it just feels a, a, a little strange. I mean, you gotta understand that they're never gonna get any closer or any farther away from each other. So this is being pulled as far away from this as it can with the pressure from the from these two right here. But it is still really fun to do, and it's especially simple if you, um, you know, if I were to just take this one and get get rid of it. 
Oh, well, I can't do that while I'm simulating. And I'll hit play. And you can now see that they they fall totally fine. And the um, the cable actors are pretty tunable. Uh, you can say, you know, how how wide is it? So we can say like two only. You can also actually tell it to um, the number of solver iterations. So I'm gonna say like four, and it'll actually get a lot smoother. But it does lag more. Okay, so it runs a little bit smoother, and you can see that they're not perfectly 100% attached to the center. You can see that they're drifting a little bit away from the center. Uh, that's just physics in general. You know, physics has to have an error tolerance, otherwise the systems will crash. So there's a there's a tolerance for how much things can just drift in general. But anyways, that's it. Uh, hopefully you guys found that cool and fun and interesting. I'll see you guys in the next one. Tip signing off.